Okay, we've had a look at volumes of swords of revolutions for uh, shapes that ro rotate around the x-axis. So what we're going to have a look at here, this is example four in our, <clears throat> excuse me, in our applications of calculus. We're going to have a look at what's the approach that we take when we want to rotate a shape around the y-axis. Is it the same principle? Does it, we use the same formula? Well, obviously not exactly the same formula, but we can use the same principle behind it. So here's a couple of examples of shapes that we're now rotating around the y-axis. So how do we derive the, the formula or the, the process for finding this volume? Let's have a look at a basic function. It could be a straight line function. We'll call it y equals f of x. And this time, instead of uh, thinking about the distance from the x-axis to the function, we're thinking about the distance as a function to the y-axis here. Okay, and this is going to be our two-dimensional shape, say, between uh, points A and B on the y-axis. So we've got a triangle here, and if we were to rotate that around the y-axis, just as we would around the x-axis, we'd end up with a cone. And again, the idea behind it is that this time, on a, a horizontal basis, there are an infinite amount of small slices which are circular. So we can still think about uh, the formula being something to do with pi r squared, except this time the radius is the distance from the y axis to the function. So we need to think about the it's effectively a, a, a a value of the x coordinate. So our formula for the volume of this solid would be the integral from our limits a to b of not pi y squared but pi x squared. So the function has to be written in terms of x and because we're integrating it and thinking about around the y axis we're going to integrate it with respect to y because our function is going to be in terms of y. So it's the same shape, it looks similar except that the key difference being that our function is going to begin x equals, and it's going to be in terms of y, and also that we're going to integrate with respect to y. The process, other than that, is going to be the same. Let's have a look at example 4. The area between the curve y equals 2x squared plus 3, and the line y equals 6 is rotated around the y axis to find the resultant volume. So we've got a function here. There only is one uh, line, y equals 6, because uh, the function itself cuts the y-axis at some point. And you might be able to read it off of the squared uh, grid there. But remember, if you need to, and we want to find the y-intercept, we can always do that. y-intercept when x equals 0. x-intercept when y equals 0 y-intercept when x equals 0, so if the function is y equals 2x squared plus 3, and we're saying that x equals 0, then y equals 3. So we know that this point here is 3, and we know that we've got the point 6. And we're looking to rotate this shape around the y-axis. Let's get rid of that part there. Let's get the whole thing. Uh, and what it's going to do, of course, you don't have to sketch the shape, but it's going to create a three-dimensional uh, shape that looks a bit like that. What's the volume of it? Well, we can say that the volume of the shape is the integral of pi r squared. It's about circles. But this time, a radius is to do with the x direction, x axis. So it's going to be a function in terms of x, and we're integrating with respect to y, and we're going from 3 to 6. Again, pi is a constant term, so we can keep that out of the integration. And we need a function in terms of x squared. Well, uh, fortunately, it's not so easy to do. It's not so difficult to do. Um, if we were to subtract 3 from both sides, we get that, and then divide through by the 2, and we get x squared equals y minus 3 over 2, or a half y minus 3. 
Now, again, we don't have to find the square root of both sides. We don't have to find it exactly in terms of x because we would be looking for it in terms of x squared anyway. So we've got our function in terms of x squared. And so we can say it's a half of y minus 3 with respect to y. Again, that half is multiplying. It's a constant term, so I would take that out and just deal with the integral of y minus 3, which would be y squared over 2 minus 3y, 3 to 6. It's a matter of substituting. Substitute in 6, and we get uh, 6 squared over 2 minus 3 times 6 minus 3 squared over 2 minus 3 times 3 that first bracket 36 divided by 2 is 18 18 minus 18 means that that whole value there is 0 and on the second uh, bracket we've got 9 over 2 minus 9 9 over 2 minus 9 is negative 9 over 2 which means that we end up with the value a half pi multiplied by 9 over 2, which gives us 9 pi over 4. Now, what have we got? All these equal signs, we're dealing with volume. And so, having worked out all of that, the volume is 9 pi over 4 cubic units. So the main issue here is not all the the integration and substitution is the fact that we've got a formula that we can use to work out the volume of the solid forms when we rotate around the y-axis. The main difference in all of that is that we need to make sure that we're dealing with a function that starts x squared equals and that we're then integrating with respect to y. Okay, so there's another example. So you can check out that example 5 and hopefully it will help make sense.